this. But Colgate reported a good set of numbers for the fourth quarter. Margins were hit. Uh, margins have hit an all-time high. Revenue prof and pro profits also saw healthy growth. Uh, we spoke, my colleague Mangalam spoke with the management. Uh, Prabha Narasimhan, Managing Director and CEO at Colgate. Listen in. Uh, from a consumption lens uh, in the country, I think uh, I'm going to restrict my comments largely to what we're seeing in the oral care category. A uh, couple of things that we are seeing. Firstly, we had discussed in the past uh, the need for companies like us or particularly us actually to drive consumption of the toothpaste category. And that's something that we've started the journey on. We'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it shortly. Uh, but the second thing that we are seeing that all uh, companies are calling out, uh, including us, and we'd actually called it out, I think, towards the beginning of second half of last year was some early green shoots in recovery in rural consumption. We're now seeing more of that as we go into this quarter and our rural growths have actually been about 200 basis points ahead of our urban growths uh, for the first time ahead of urban growths in the last little while. So that's really heartening to see and augurs well, I think, for the remaining quarters. In as much as urban is concerned, premiumization continues apace. Uh, uh, there's a lot of headroom opportunity in oral care for premiumization. So it's a good thing that uh, it continues to, to pick up speed. Uh, and urban consumption, like I said, we've done some concerted efforts. Uh, obviously, too early to measure results of those efforts, but the right thing to do. All right. Uh, you know, I was listening to your conference call, and you did say that uh, pricing from now appears a little more moderate in terms of a tool for growth going forward. Instead, you expect the growth to come in from volumes as well as the mix premiumization that you just spoke about. Could you give us a sense of what are you gunning for in terms of category growing in FY25 and how much of that would be, uh, you know, something that Colgate would do maybe better than category or at par if at all? So I think, um, firstly, as we look towards uh, growth, there are three parts to growth, like you've said. The first part is volume growth. The second part is mixed growth. Then the third part is pricing growth. And on pricing growth, I think as we are seeing inflation moderate, uh, we do expect that price increases that the category will get and therefore we will get as well will be more moderate. That then needs to be made up or more than made up actually by mix and, and volume. And our effort will be to actually get a balanced view of all of these three uh, as pricing moderates a little bit, uh, mix picks up a little bit, volume picks up a little bit, still allowing us to record competitive growths, uh, but it, with a more balanced view between these three. So if one was to assume a double digit growth for, uh, you know, you all in FY25, how would you uh, balance that out in terms of price, mix and volume? So I think if I was to give you just ranges, Mangalam, rather than the specifics, because honestly, we don't have, uh, you know, we don't measure the, the specifics or we don't communicate the specifics. Uh, I think pricing probably in the range of 3 to 5% would be uh, the range of pricing that we could look at and the remaining coming from mix and, and volume. Uh, Dabur reported a 22% jump in their oral care. Uh, HUL reported a double-digit growth in their oral care business as well. So were you better than the market this time around? What, what explains their outperformance? So I think, uh, like with all things, I, I mean, I know we report results on a quarterly basis and we have conversations on a quarterly basis, but uh, I firmly believe that the way to run organizations is really to look at them over a longer term basis and the joy or the not joy, as the case may be, of being in the oral care category is that most of the large players are listed. We do get to see what is their performance over in the immediate quarter, as well as what has been the more medium term performance. And as I look at this, I'm actually feeling quite happy with our results. I think uh, we're in a good place. We have a very well laid out strategy. We're executing to that strategy. Uh, the strategy is working for us to get to uh, competitive growth. We're doing really well on bottom line as well and therefore are really fit for investment as we go into the, the rest of this year or into the new financial year. Uh, so altogether, I'm actually in a good place. All right. And uh, what's also in a good place is your margins. I mean, 35.7% is uh, the record margins that the company has posted. Though I'm not sure whether the street is happy about them having hit a record high or they are unhappy about, you know, you not having invested as much as they thought it, they would. Or maybe they're wondering whether there is any more upside to margins here. I mean, just want your thoughts on where margins would be going forward and whether one should look at this 35.7 as an uh, as a one-off. 
So I think, uh, firstly, I want to comment on the fact that uh, good margins actually is a demonstration of a very, very strong brand and a PNL that is exceedingly robust. So actually, from a perspective of margins having gone up, I think it's a good thing that margins have gone up while top line has gone up as well. And it helps us, therefore, to have the money and the fuel for investment. Having said that, this margin has gone up despite the fact that our advertising expenditure for the year has grown faster than our top line growth. We've increased advertising expenditure by about 20%. Colgate is, if I'm not mistaken, the most advertised FMCG brand or at least certainly in the top three uh, FMCG brands in terms of advertising. And the amount of money that we're spending now is in the ballpark of between 750 to 800 crores on advertising, which is a sizable amount uh, of expenditure behind building a brand. Um, the immediate quarter margins uh, are a function of two or three things. They are obviously a function of a very, very strong, what we call funding the growth program, which is really a program that looks at costs up and down our value chain across every single line and is ruthless about taking out every non-value adding cost. We have a great rhythm to this. And what we are finding is that we are able to get between four to 6% of net sales or four to 6% of turnover of non-value adding costs that we can remove without compromising on product quality. And in fact, we're then able to invest back some of this into better product quality and into the increased advertising that you see. So from my perspective, uh, actually margin is a sign of great strength. It puts us in a position to be able to invest even more uh, to take this category and to drive the strategic priorities that we have. So are you comfortable with the margins that you have currently staying at the, this level or you no, would I like them? The, hmm. Sorry to interrupt, but the, I think the gross margins that we are at are probably at the, uh, ballpark the levels that we would like to be at, give or take uh, you know, marginal movements on either side. Uh, that's kind of the space in which we would like to operate. Uh, and that's probably the space at which uh, we will stay. All right. What about Palmolive? Uh, we've seen a lot of uh, new launches, but I mean, too early to call any sort of growth pattern out here yet. Uh, what are you factoring in? Uh, 2x the uh, por portfolio growth in FI25? So I think uh, from a Palmolive perspective, firstly, I think uh, it's been a series of structured changes that we have done on the brand. The first, of course, is for us to focus on where we believe we have the right to win. And we believe we have the right to win in body wash and hand wash. We have upgraded our formulations towards the back end of, uh, of last year. Uh, beginning of this year, we've launched three new variants on body wash. Just with the improved product and the new variants, we were already seeing a share uptick in uh, in modern trade and e-commerce. We do expect that this channels of the future uh, will continue to grow uh, both modern trade as well as e-commerce and that the mass media will help as well. Uh, the television campaign is supported by influencer, by digital and by shopper as well. Uh, and I must confess, I'd be disappointed if we didn't end up at at least around 3x of our uh, average growths on Palmolive. Uh, Prabha, so just to sum things up, if you were targeting double digit revenue growth in uh, FY25, you would see no more than 3 to 5% coming in from price. The rest would come from volume and mix. How about uh, 30 to 34% in terms of margins as a band with the gross margins staying where they are and Palmolive growing 3x the entire portfolio? Would that sum your targets up for the next year? So I think I tend, like I said, I tend not to give specific guidances on, you know, top line growth. But in terms of the shape of the PNL, uh, I think that is what we would be looking for, which is accelerated top line growth supported by, you know, gross margins staying in the ballpark of where they are at. And for us to invest to make sure that we have enough ammunition to deliver the competitive growth that we are looking to deliver. Looking at accelerated growth, maintaining margin. That's a very interesting interview coming in with Colgate. Also saying that the rural consumption was 200 basis points more than urban. Echoing what Dabur said. Dabur two weeks back said rural is growing faster than urban by 400 basis points. And for Colgate, it was about 200 basis points.